Welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to be going through the best settings for the MSI MPG 272URX. This is their new 27 inch 4K OLED monitor. We're going to set the screen up in both SDR and HDR usage, and we'll also go through the settings for things like OLED care and other general settings. So we have the screen in its default configuration, and first of all, we're going to change a few things in the settings and the MSI OLED care menu. So in here, we're just going to come down and make sure that HDMI CEC is turned on. That's useful if you've got any external devices like a console or something connected via HDMI. It will automatically switch over to that input when it detects that you've powered it on. That's useful. You can enable the USB Type-C power delivery charge if you want there as well. You can also turn the power button or the power LED on or off there in the menu if you want to. In the MSI OLED Care menu, we want to leave as many of these features turned on as possible to help mitigate the risk of image retention. You'll see that most of them are turned on by default anyway. You can change things like the reducing level, like how much it will dim the screen if it detects a static image, that kind of thing. Have a play around with those, just make sure that as many of them are turned on as possible. If you find any problems with any of them or you find them distracting or they cause issues in any of your usage, you can come in here and turn them off individually if you want to, but it's best to leave those on and just go in the menu and just check that they are all enabled. So we're going to set the screen up for SDR usage first of all, and the first setting that will change is in the professional menu. We're going to move off the eco mode preset and onto the user preset. You should see an immediate jump in the brightness, but this will give you full access to the brightness range of the panel for SDR. The eco mode is quite severely capped in terms of its maximum brightness. So let's move to the user mode. There are some other preset modes down the bottom here for emulating the sRGB, Adobe RGB or DCI-P3 color spaces. For now, we're just going to stick on the user mode. I'll talk about the others in a moment. So in the user mode, this will operate the screen at its full native wide gamut. And we're going to come into the image section and we're going to adjust the brightness setting first of all. So we're going to set this at a setting of 33. That will give you a luminance around 120 nits. If you want something a bit higher, you can set this at 44 for around 150 or 62 for around 200 nits. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to set that down at 33, but changing the brightness will have no impact on the rest of the calibration at all. So set this to whatever you feel is comfortable for your usage, your ambient light conditions and so on. So we set that at 33. Contrast can stay at 70. Sharpness you can leave at zero unless you particularly want to artificially sharpen the image, maybe for gaming or video or something. The color temperature, we're going to move to the customization option. So this gives you access to the RGB channels. First of all, we're going to bump all of them up to 100 because when they're down at 50, it actually makes the screen darker than intended. So we're going to start with them all at 100 and then we're going to adjust them to 95 for red, 99 for green and we'll leave blue on 100. That should give you a white point very close to 6,500 Kelvin. So that will give you the optimum white balance there. So 95, 99, 100. And that should be all you need to change in the image section. If you're sticking with the user mode and the full native wide gamut, you might also want to check out our calibrated ICC profile that's available in our database linked in the description below. That's designed to clamp the color space back to sRGB for use in color aware applications. So that makes a nice addition to the settings that we've just configured there for the user mode. An alternative if you want to use sRGB color gamut for all content is just to switch to the sRGB mode here. So that will clamp the gamut back to sRGB for all applications in SDR and all usage. So it's up to you. You might want to use the user mode and the full wide gamut, perhaps to give you more vivid and saturated colors for gaming and multimedia and that kind of thing and then use our ICC profile for color aware applications like Photoshop and so on. Or you might just want to use sRGB and have the accurate color space for SDR content for all usage. So if you want to use that, you can do so. And then in the image section, the color temperature you'll see is now grayed out. That's not available, but we can adjust the brightness. So you can again use the same settings we used before, 33 for around 120 nits, 44 for 150 nits, or around 62 for 200 nits. Again, set that to whatever you want for your usage and your ambient light conditions. In the gaming menu, you can have a play around with any of the additional gaming features you might want to use. The night vision setting is quite useful for tweaking the near black grayscale 
to bring out some details in the shadows and that kind of thing. Have an experiment with that for your games and your usage. If you find the shadow detail to be a bit limited, that does quite a nice job if you move up those settings of bringing some of that uh, darker grey detail out. You probably also want to make sure that you've got adaptive sync on. That will enable VRR for compatible NVIDIA and AMD systems as well. Note that in the gaming section, the game mode presets are just equivalent to what you see in the professional menu. They're just alternative preset configurations for brightness, colours, sharpness and that kind of thing. Feel free to use any of those if you want for specific gaming, but you'll probably be just as well just to use our configured user mode in the professional menu where we've tweaked things like the colour balance and so on. We're also going to set the screen up now in HDR mode. We've enabled HDR in Windows. You'll see that the HDR on icon appears in the on-screen menu. As a reminder, we'd recommend only enabling HDR when you're using actual HDR content, whether that's games or movies or whatever. Otherwise, leave HDR in Windows turned off. The reasons for this are explained in a lot of detail in our additional video that's linked below, so check that out if you want to know any more. In HDR mode, there's only a couple of things that you really need to change. It's best to use the user mode here in the menu. That will give you the full wide gamut of the panel. You'll see some of the other emulation modes are greyed out in this mode anyway, so that doesn't matter. In the image section, the only setting you really have access to here is for the display HDR mode. There are two modes. There's True Black 400 or Peak 1000 nits. Now you might want to experiment with both of these modes for your HDR content. The True Black 400 mode is likely to look at the moment a bit brighter in most content, certainly in a lot of lighter, brighter scene content. The Peak 1000 mode can reach a higher peak brightness, but it's only really brighter for low APL scenes, so very dark scenes with peak highlights. MSI are working on a firmware update to hopefully improve the Peak 1000 mode, but at the moment we'd recommend just experimenting with the two modes, see which one you prefer for the type of HDR content that you're viewing. Other than that, there's nothing else that you really need to enable for HDR, so that is it. So that's the screen set up for both SDR and HDR modes, as well as things like the OLED care options. If you found the video useful, please just give us a quick like below. That would be really helpful. And if you'd like to help support TFT Central and the content that we produce, please consider joining our Patreon, which is linked below, which will give you various perks like early access to reviews, articles, and other content. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.